Hello everybody and welcome back to a CK2 tutorial with me, Midge Man. As you'll see, my curse is back in line. Huzzah! And I'm back finally after a long time. Now, the original save I was going to do this part with uh, corrupted, so I've been setting up a new save. We are playing as uh, Albert the Wise of Island of Trade tutorial. So, we lof left off last time reforming to feudalism. So, what happens if, as Ireland, you were to refu reform into a merchant republic? Well, we've got our large market city set up. We are going to reform to a merchant republic. Now, you'll notice something happened straight away. Some great houses have arisen from Irish politics. Uh, there's, You'll have four great houses apply. Now, if, if you are Ireland or a tribal duchy, and you have duchies underneath you, these great houses will come from the dukes. Um, if it's if you're not a duke, is what will tend to happen. Uh, sorry, I'll rephrase that. If you're a duke, it will sometimes come from your counts, if you have independent counts. So it will normally come from independent vassals that also haven't reformed. If you don't, if you're a one-county minor, which is what happens in places like Venice and such, uh, random houses will generate. And we have become a trade republic. We are now Prince Mayor Alban of the Wise of Ire. So we're the, the, the most serene republic of Ire. Uh, Ear. I think it's Ear, actually. Um, and you get this screen, which is the Republic screen. Now, when playing as a merchant republic, this screen is the main thing. This is how inheritance works. And that is through putting money into a campaign fund or by having the most prestige. You get points um, towards respect. And now respect is made up of three things. Prestige, money in the campaign fund, and age factor. So it's normally oldest people will inherit if you leave it. Also, the most money inherit. Uh, we've got quite a lot of money, so I don't feel too bad about inheriting and such. Uh, I don't feel bad about our chances, and we're still quite young with only 43. Um, but as it stands, because our eldest son, or eldest heir in our land, we haven't is, is, is kind of infirm, not very good. We haven't got a lot of respect for our heir. Um, well, one thing I'm going to do is quickly build an upgrade to our mansion. We'd, so basically, one of the things that will happen, as you may have noticed, is... On the Reformation, you get this screen, and you also now have this house here, which is uh, your like governing manor as a trade republic. It counts as another um, like a barony or title, but it is in the Republic screen. It doesn't matter. It's not on the map, but you can get some seriously good bonuses from it. And upgrading the mansion is one. That's giving me plus 10% levy size and plus 2 tax income. Fantastic. Another thing that you'll notice when you reform is that because I had upgraded the Stone Hill Fort, a castle has created in a lot of my uh, duchies as well as churches. Um, I can't hold some of these titles. I can hold the castles, so we will hold on to them. And as mayors, we hold on to cities, and this is the main difference. As republics, you have you have to be locked into elections. You can't become a republic that has uh, a dictator. It doesn't work like that. You have to win these elections, and there's a couple of ways you can do that. One is by, obviously, putting loads of money in, like I just did there, having the age factor, and also through murder. So if we kill these people, you know, they're not going to be able to uh, control their portion of the Republic anymore, are they? And if you fully kill off a family, well, you'll see what happens. Now, this guy currently is my heir. Not very good. However, I do have, uh, as you may have just seen, this guy, Eamon, who is a spawn of Satan. And uh, <laughs> I went through a little bit of an event chain to get him. Now, I kind of want this guy to be my heir. So if we now go into the positions screen in minor titles, you can designate an heir. So it doesn't have to be the crap guy. I can have the spawn of Satan be my heir. And I'm just going to give out some titles like so. And yeah, so that is the main difference in a Merchant Republic is the election screen. Now, we get 
money we we generate power through money so another good thing to do is instead of building castles as you would with um with feudal titles you want to build cities because that's money is power and you'll notice as well we have quite a larger retinue size that doesn't translate right now because obviously i have only just converted but we will find that money is key as a republic as it should be we will be hiring mercenaries to do a lot of our fighting because we'll have that available to us and we will have a large retinue now uh what do i want to do now yes the other thing about republics is this trade posts i'm going to build you can see how many trade posts you have in the republic screen under here and trade posts are modified by uh, adult males in your court uh, and also your trade practices tech. Because this is early game, we have low trade practices tech. We're not going to have that many available trade posts, but it's securing the capital trade post is paramount if you want to control and dominate a merchant republic because it is the main inflow point and it will allow you to generate money from the rest of your trade post it can be done if you're not the, the the highest ranking title you can do it with your own but it is paramount to try and take a capital of your nation because you'll see the best come of it um a new great house has risen okay because of the size of our um why did you die you got murdered by this chief here. Well, we're going to murder you for murdering our kid. And this is the main thing about um, Merchant Republics you'll find. You'll do a lot more murdering. Uh, you'll do tenfold the amount of murdering than you would as a feudal government. Because everyone is out to kill everyone. Money equals greed. So, uh, well, the spawn of Satan just died. Which is a bit upsetting. So, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to wait until hopefully some of our kids are a little bit better now if we were to lose the election the next election when i die uh, as serene doge doesn't mean we lose our titles no in fact we keep our title holdings minus the ones in the capital so another good thing is i set it up so meath here which was originally this character's capital was no longer the capital and i um am building this province up as well as a security blanket so to speak so i'm going to build another city there i've wasted a lot of my money uh but it will all be worth it in the future now i want an advisor you are you actually just a duchess no you're still a chiefess oh okay you didn't reform interesting connock didn't reform all right okay anyway uh, we want to be improving the trade practices tech if we can. Now, for that, we're going to need economic tech points. So you, Grand Mayor Talaric the Usurper, I need you to be researching me tech points. Thank you very much. And I'm going to be doing that, actually, with most of my... Um, for all three tech. I want military tech, um, cultural tech, and economic tech, which you select through your chancellor screen. Not chancellor screen. Council screen. My goodness. Okay. As you'll notice as well, you like I said briefly, you cannot change the succession lords in a republic, so you can't become a dictator. But you can revoke council powers all the same, which we will be working towards as well. Now, you might have noticed that also when I zoomed out, hello, Scotland has my name over it. Well, they're currently paying me tribute. And this is another good thing as a republic. If you can get some tributaries... You get bigger income. Look at our income pool. 20, plus 20 ducats a month. Right. Our trade post has been built. I do apologize if I've been talking very quickly. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these tutorials. If this has gone a bit quick, uh, let me know in the comments if there's something you don't understand. By the end of the video, I will be happy to answer your questions and... Uh, talk you through something that I might have kind of gone a little bit rushed over. The reason I'm talking quite quickly for the Merchant Republics is there isn't a lot of difference to what I've talked about in previous parts. There's just a few new mechanics that I want to go over and then just play some so you get a feel of it. So, 
trade post has been built. Now, these count, count like hospitals. I'm going to build the hospital. So they are another holding within a county, and they increase trade value and tax income. So trade value is um, something that's calculated in the wealth, and you find the overall wealth um, through the the title screen which you can access by clicking any of the titles if you want to find the actual title of the each grand city you find that there so by clicking any one of my titles I can see how much money is coming in if I click my kingdom it gives me the overall and that gives you the breakdown so trade doesn't in unlike EU4 trade doesn't work like okay you have loads of trade zones and you work it around like that trade literally works by connecting trade posts essentially and increasing their value and then the um, more trade value coming from a city the more money gets sent back to your capital that's essentially how it's calculated I believe correct me if I'm wrong but that's how I see it seems to work for me so we are the first people uh, in our republic to get a trade zone out and there's no competing trade republics in the area. So this it, this C tile here is controlled by ear, as it's been shown on the trade zones map mode, which you can find here on your normal mini bar. I actually have my trade zones map mode locked, linked as one of my primary map modes, as well as the economy map mode, because I need I like it for ease of access. Also, unlike EU4 and the upcoming Imperator, there isn't trade goods, so it's nothing to worry about there. It's just money and building buildings. That's essentially what you're going to be doing for a lot of a Merchant Republic play playthrough. Um, just increasing how good your cities are to increase your revenue. Your revenue, therefore, grows exponentially, and so on and so forth. Right, as you can see in the republic screen it actually also lists your trade republics now there as you notice there was this trade post limit you can technically go over it but i do warn you that if you are over your trade lim trade post limit and you lose the title of um doge there is a chance that the doge will take titles from you and dish them out to other people. So do be careful about going over your trade posts. Likewise, though, if you find that another republic has gained some trade posts and you want it, uh, and you don't have as many trade posts as them as the doge, you can take it from them, which is all fun. So Anglesey has just been taken as a trade post, which is just... They've taken a trade post in Wales. Wales here has got... Um, Quite a nice big income, actually, in Anglesey. Wow, look, it, I, it calculates slightly off of uh, this area, this bar here. Um, and they're getting it here. So trade zone value. So uh, trade value here is combined from Anglesey itself. That's fine. And they're making 12 off of that trade zone. If I saw this, I'm making 10 off of this trade zone because of reasons that I don't remember how to calculate. It's all there. There it is. So the reason this trade um, trade post that has been made by Obranian uh, is worth more, basically, is coming down to uh, a number of modifiers here, including the Artisans Workshop, the technology, it's prospering, trade zone bonus, because it's connected to the capital. Now, yes, ours is worth less, but we have... A hidden capital bonus, I believe, which is one of those things. Again, reason why I want this trade zone. This trade zone is going to connect this area up. If we can connect another trade zone eventually to our trade zone, it will start multiplying. And it's stacking these multipliers and modifiers that gets us the money. All right. Uh, I do want an extra legalism up just like normal CK2 I will also get improved keeps so we're waiting for a few things to build up oh you're no longer um, you're no longer infirm that's good but you are a lunatic fine now as you'll notice there I skipped over it a little bit too quick this lady here had a bride price. 
because we are no longer a feudal title, therefore people people are less likely to give us their women, uh, which sounds crude, yes, but it's something that happened historically. Uh, basically, because we don't offer the chance that everyone's going to be landed or there's nothing there for it, um, I've just died. Interesting. Right. Hold fire. Hold fire right there. Because we're about to lose. Yep, yeah, we're about to lose the um, Republic already. Because I died in battle. Because I was talking about other things. Right. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things now. I kind of wanted this to happen. Now. <clears throat> you'll notice a few things. Bride price. I'll finish that before I move on. Bride price means that if you are want to marry if you want to marry your characters off from other families that aren't from a trade republic, you will have to normally pay a bride price. And uh, that can, and that calculates differently on who your character is and so on and so forth. Anyway, what's this character's stats? Okay, I'm going to go intrigue focus with this guy and see if we can't assassinate our way back to the top. Now, another thing about Merchant Republics is that the more men that are adults in your home court, the more trade posts you can run. I am here, house trade tutorial, I can only have one. That's, that's because of the lack of men in court, of my family, of my dynasty. Well, we're going to have, hopefully, that'll change when these guys become of age. You cannot inherit the Republic if you are not of age. But there are ways to get the Republic. Uh, and first up, I'm not going to murder him. I'm going to start trying to murder... I need a court decision. I'm going to try and murder the man with the most respect. Um which is this gentleman here. Let's try and kill him off. Because, likewise, um, the people with the most respect, if they die, all their respect goes with them. Another thing is, if you lose the campaign with money in the campaign fund, that money is not recoverable. So uh, be aware of that as well. All right, so, like I said, we remained in control of the titles of Meath, um... Kildara, and that's it. We didn't keep. We did keep the city underneath, did we? No. Yes. Yes, because we still hold the duchy. I think. No, we we got to keep it. Okay. We sometimes you don't get to keep the um city beneath the main title, but for this time I have. Ah, my council. I need a council because I'm no longer. I no longer have the um, royal council. So I need all of this tech researched again. Unfortunate. All right. Okay. So we've got to try and fight our way back to the top, and that's gonna be doable. I think, with our skill up murder, because we've already killed one. As you notice, the nice, respectable man is now not at the top. So next in line, apparently, is this guy. Um, well, you, sir, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and murder you. I do not want to be a commander of yours, no, sir. I will build castle walls there. Got a lot of castles that need development. So, one thing to note about Merchant Republics is women aren't very valuable. Uh, women in a Merchant Republic are good for matrilineal marriages if you can get sons out of it. And the whole idea of women in this is to make more sons, unfortunately. And that's just the way the mechanics work. You can't be a female and inherit a merchant republic. Unless you reform that. But that I didn't, I've never seen that before. That might be new. 
Okay, I'll have to test that if I get to power. And offering me the title of steward. Sure, I'll be the steward. So our income isn't as good because we are no longer Grand Mayor, so we have no direct uh, control of our port for one thing, and yeah, we're, we've lost all of our men because we've lost the kingdom title, we can't call on our vassals, we're in a little bit of a shame of position, but like I said, there's nothing that a little back backstabbing and in-court intrigue won't get you. My mother wants to go on a journey. Fine. She's very ill, so she might as well. Hmm. They've got a lady. Oh, okay. Normally this doesn't happen if you're playing an Iron Man game. But apparently a lady is about to inherit the Republic. The reason for that is I've accidentally left a... Um, I've left a... What do you call it? Uh, I've left a game rule on um, when making this save. Oh, I've got camp fever, unfortunately. I've left a game rule on in this save, allowing the equality of women. Um, I forgot to mention that. So this might look different to some games. Oh, we've died again. We had camp fever. So now we're a child and we definitely can't inherit. That's unfortunate. This character's a genius. Gained trusting. Very unfortunate. And all of my council have gone again. My goodness. It's been a while since I've played a Merchant Republic, but basically the foundations come down to build buildings. Why not? Let's have a homosexual character. Start of the Viking Age. Oh, trade zones are starting to appear all up and down the country. Yeah, build buildings, build your economy, and or murder your way to the top. Much like most of CK2. And once you get the hang of that, and once you get a hang of building multiple trade posts, funneling the money in, getting control of the late elections, Trade Republics can be one of the most fun games ever. I did a, I think really early on my channel, I did a like almost 200 part multiplayer of um, CK2 with a Merchant Republic. I don't know if it's all still up. I cannot remember. But yeah. That's basically the fundament, fundamental changes between a Merchant Republic and a, a normal feudal game. And that's how what a reform into it looks like. We've just come of age. We're a very good diplomat. However, I am also going to go back to intrigue focus, get that plot power increase. Going to try and groom an heir. Let's see if I can find someone to marry. I'm, I'm going to need a, I'm going to need a lustful woman. Um, because I am a homosexual, so I will need a lusty woman. She'll marry me. That's cool. And there we have a new lusty wife. And hopefully I'm going to have some more children. Uh, even so, even though I'm not, um, exactly the, uh, most able man for the task um but yeah and i'll i i'm gonna keep playing obviously because i want to try and wrestle let's see if i can wrestle um the title away from the people that have stolen it from us already i didn't expect to lose the title this fast but it's given me a nice opportunity to show you what fighting for the top of a republic looks like 
But that's CK2, you can never expect what will happen. So we're going to try and mar uh, murder this highly respectful woman here. But a lot of people are much more respectful than we are because prestige is potent. Prestige and age factor. Ours literally comes from age factor and it's not a lot. Because we're very young. We're only 17 years old. Oh no, they found out I was going to murder her. He's a fortune builder. He is the heir. No, he's not. That's the one that's a... Who said they were a fortune builder? You're a fortune builder. I'm going to designate you the heir, I think. Wait, no, can I designate... Oh, no. Yeah, I can designate her to be the heir. Much better, thank you. Right, matrilineally marry her off. Needs to be someone that can be in court. Otherwise, she'll leave court and we'll lose the bonuses for any kids that she has. You need marrying off to someone that will allow you to remain in court. She'll be fine. There was a bride price of 200 there and I didn't check. Always check your bride prices, people. Kingdom of Italy. Italy has formed up. Interesting. Can we up our trade practices tech? Not yet. We need a lot more. I need another research economic tech, please. Okay, our income's going back up slowly. We're up to five ducats. So if, if you're looking to educate characters of... I don't mean size. Hmm. Okay. Our half-sister died. Of pneumonia. I don't think this family is long for this world. Uh, one of the things that's affecting our income actually is the fact that we're over our demand size and I hadn't really taken notice of it. So is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give away the baronies and I'm going to give them away to our family so we don't lose them because we can. I'm going to give it to my brothers which should allow them to remain in court. And that should equalize our income a bit more. Yeah, 14 ducats. That's much better. Yeah. Um, so be aware of that. Obviously, um, being over any of these limits up here um, does... A f oh, good. She died. We've murdered another one. Unfortunately, they're just as respected. Try and kill this one over here. Um... Yeah, because being over that limit does hamper your economy and your ability. Because it's basically saying you are unable to govern them correctly, so things are going under the under the radar. You're not able to um, tax them efficiently, and so you're missing out on money. So it's actually better for my economy to have given given those titles away. designate this lady as my heir yep unfortunately that's one thing I did did forget to know I didn't I don't remember this happening before but because these two lads now are not in my court 
They're courtiers, but not in my court. Unfortunately, they're unable to be designated as heirs. They can still inherit, but they are not designated as heirs. I'll black back your plot to kill the, the Prince Mayor. Make me Marshal? Fine, why not? Um, Levy focused? No, not giving you my men. So, this is it, basically. This is what a trade republic will amount to. It's a lot more looking in at the map rather than looking away. However, you'll notice over here, one of our uh, fellow patricians has taken Sussex. Now, I do want to try and get to a point where I can show you how that they've done that. Uh, it's a lot more looking in, taking ports, rather than empire spreading. There's a lot more backroom backstabbing, trying to kill people off, etc., etc. Now, the way... Um, the way republics get their claims is through these trade posts as well. Trade posts, you get, you place them um, on a tile, and, and then you get a claim where you're allowed to take the city within a feudal realm. And then once you've taken the city, you can then get a claim on the county and then switch it into a into a, a merchant republic. Although. They haven't done that with Sussex. They've actually just vassalized them by the looks of it or turned them into a vassal. That, I think, has been through a strain of inheritance. Yeah, that was an inheritance. But it did prompt me to talk about how merchant republics expand. Now, you don't want to, as a merchant republic, have loads of feudal vassals under you because they'll all have negatives. It's actually better to just kind of sit and make your money but taking key ports around the world is very potent as well because it will allow you to make sure you control these trade zones and connect areas. One good aim to try and do, which is why a lot of the uh, main merchant republics in history were in Italy, is what you want to try and do with these trade posts is connect your main hub to hubs such as Ends of the Silk Road, Constantinople, Rome. If you get control of Rome, there's potency there. London's another one. If you can gain uh, economic control of those areas, you'll start making very big bank. And that's what we're going to try and aim to do, or what you should try and aim to do as a merchant republic. I hope this guide on merchant republics has been useful. Again, like I said, I will try and explain anything I've missed in the comments. But I think you get the idea of a merchant republic. It's a good fun game if you want to just kind of uh, sit in a mass wealth rather than you know, make yourself or your family, your dynasty, the rulers of Europe. It's actually one way to kind of play almost like a smaller uh, a family and uh, find out oh, someone is attacking my retinue because we're attacking Meath. Well, that sucks. I'm losing my retinue. All right. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a way that you get to... You can, you can start to fund wars around the globe because you'll have this massive pool of money. It's very good fun in multiplayer as well. Um, being this sort of, I'm just going to sit here and mass the wealth, and then a player comes to you and like, hey, I want to go to war with... France says, hey, I want to go to war with Saxony, and you're like, oh, can I have some money to do so? Yeah, we can fund you. What's in it for us? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a fun little fun little thing and likewise you can still expand like i've given this title to my family members and now they're almost a uh, sub branch with baronies there you can as a merchant republic fund your family to become kings of different places and hey there's a lot of fun in that as well anyway i've been midge man i will see you guys in the next video um tell me in the comments below if there's anything else you would like a tutorial on i've done merchant republics i've done sort of reforming from tribal to feudal is there something else you guys want covered i can try and cover it i do like this tutorial series and i hope it's been a help a lot of people says it has i uh, i'm always open to do more tutorials i'll see you guys in the next video though bye bye now